morning everyone today i'm going to show you how to make are you ready for this guys look at this how to make shredded chicken meat look how beautiful this is i was able to come up with a pretty decent recipe to show you how i make it in a pressure cooker but when I tell you this is delicious, this is delicious. So I'm going to show you how I make this meat. And I'm going to make a new batch because we really can't get enough of this. So I'm just going to cover this up and put this back in my fridge. And I'm going to show you how simple it really is with only a little bit of ingredients. And I wanted to get this done for you. So I am going to show you how I make it. So have patience with me. And I'll put this back in the fridge for later. So yeah, so let's start. Uh, we're going to start off with a whole can of chickpeas. Now, if you don't have chickpeas, you can use tofu. Uh, you can use white beans. That really is up to you. I'm using chickpeas, and I'm also going to leave whatever water is in my chickpeas. If it was beans, maybe I'd wash that out. But uh, the fava water is going to give it a nice little taste to it. So I'm putting the whole can. Now, how much is it? It's 400 grams of chickpeas. So uh, I measured it the other day. It's basically two cups of chickpeas and about maybe half a cup of fava water, just to give you an idea what it is. Now we're going to need a blender for this because you want to get this very creamy. And here we go. I'm putting the whole thing in. You're saying, why are you putting that water? Well, let me tell you, it's going to add a lot of flavors to it. There we go. Water and all, guys. Okay. Now, to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanut butter, leave it out. Uh, just replace the peanut butter with another fat. You can use either uh, mayonnaise or you can use, always vegan guys, right? Uh, or you can use just olive oil. So it's really up to you. But because I have the peanut butter, I'm going to use it. I'm using a natural peanut butter. It's more watery than, it's more, it's not as firm. So here's two tablespoons of peanut butter. And we're going to add... One to two tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm just using a regular spoon, soup spoon, to measure it. Okay. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. Okay, we're going to add some miso. And miso, you know, gives that nice umami flavor. So I'm going to put one tablespoon of miso. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of maple to add just a little bit of sweetness to the meat. Not much. About a teaspoon. Here we go. We're going to put a half teaspoon of agar. Don't over put it because then you won't be able to shred it. And we're going to add a tablespoon. Oh, you see what I just did? Okay, we're going to put a tablespoon. That wasn't agar, that was mushroom powder. I was really going to pull a fast one here. Okay, we're going to put a whole tablespoon, and I always do a little heaping, of mushroom powder. And my agar, here's my agar, we're going to use a half a teaspoon of agar. I'm only using half a teaspoon, but you do want to put it because it's going to give it a nice firmer texture when you eat your meat. We're going to add a little bit of salt to this. So we're going to put about maybe one and a half teaspoon. And let me see, what else did I put in there? I'm trying to remember now. So we did, oh, onions. Here we go. We're putting a nice heaping tablespoon 
of dried onions. Those are my onions. Dried flaked onions. So we're going to take this and we're going to blend this up. And you want it blended very creamy. Let me see. Is there any aquafaba left in there? There you go. We're going to put it all in. And I'm going to put just a little bit of water. Maybe about a, a quarter cup of water and shake this up. There you go. I'm just using about a quarter cup of water just to clean up my jar. Get all that aquafaba. You see it? And we're going to get this nice and creamy. Now, you know aquafaba people make um, beautiful meringue. And so it is the vegan miracle worker. So aquafaba is really like a, a vegan's dream come true because there's so many things you could do with aquafaba. So we're going to blend this into a cream. And that's what it looks like. So I'm just going to get everything else in there. And it's fun. Like, I've never used, usually I would steam my, um, I would steam my, uh, my seitan. I would use it in a steamer, but never use my pressure cooker. So I was always a little, I was nervous to use my pressure cooker anyhow. Because I remember in high school, every time I would go into that home ec class, we would always find food in the ceiling because somebody blew up the kitchen with the uh, pressure cooker. So, but today pressure cookers are really different from what they used to be. So I'm really enjoying my pressure cooker. So here we go. Now, like I said, if you're not using chickpeas, you can use um, tofu. You can use white beans. So that really is up to you. I'm using chickpeas because I have an abundance of them. Thanks to my husband always running out to pick them up when they're on sale. I wish you could taste how good this mixture is. It's really going to add a nice flavor to our meat. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to add some vital wheat glue into the mixture. And guys, I know a lot of you have been asking me, I'm gluten intolerant. Can you make me a recipe? I am really trying, but every one I've made so far is a flop. It never comes out the same as when you use vital wheat gluten. And remember, the firmer your meat is, uh, the more flour you use, the firmer your meat is going to be, right? If you make it a very loose meat, you're going to have more of a tender type meat. Okay, well, here we go. We've got one cup. And that's about three quarter. see that's about three quarters so that's one and three quarter plus guys when I say plus I mean plus that means I might use a little more because I do have a large container of of uh, saucy stuff so I might need a little more if I find if I find that my recipe is too wet but basically you want to use about uh, one and three quarter to two cups of vital wheat gluten along with this large container of, ready, of deliciousness. Did I just do that? Yes, I did. I wish you can taste that mixture. That peanut butter really makes a difference. So you know what, I might just put a little extra flour because this looks like a lot. Now remember, I, I just throw things together, but I'm going to give you the exact that I'm using. So if I'm adding more, it's because I need more. All right. I'll scrape it later. Okay, so the recipe will be marked on the side, guys. There we go. That little extra is going to give me two cups of vital wheat gluten. And that'll be easier for you to, to mix. But you're going to see your mixture anyhow. If you see your mixture is too wet when you're mixing it with your uh, food processor, you could also use the um, your stand-up mixer if you want. But if you find your mixer is too wet, then just 
Take some vital wheat gluten and just throw some in and just keep the spinning. Now, this is going to be a lot in here. I don't want to break my machine because it's already cracked. So I'm just going to get it going in the beginning and then I'm going to divide my dough in two and I'm going to mix it separate. Notice my machine's all busted. Okay, I'm going to show you. It pretty much came together. I am going to take everything out. My counter is clean, guys. Here we go. I'm just going to pick up everything off the sides. And I'm going to divide this dough in half so I'm able to... I'm going to be able to uh, get it how I want it. You want to be able to see strands, guys. Now, you can do this by hand, but it really, you got to work it hard. So I'm going to take this. And just cut it in half. There we go. And we're going to put this back into the machine. Here's one. And now we're going to do the other one. There we go. Okay. Pull this out. We're going to put the other one on top. And we're going to steam this. So I'm going to first wrap it in some parchment paper. personally don't like to have uh, I personally don't like to have it touching my uh, I don't like it touching my alum uh, the aluminum paper so I will first put it in in this and now I'm gonna wrap it with aluminum And this is going to have to cook a long time, otherwise it won't cook on you. So, I am going to put this, let's see, I'm going to probably need another one. Yeah, we're going to need another sheet of aluminum. And this is going to be cooked for a long time or steamed for a long time because it is a big piece of meat. So uh, if you don't want to make this much, cut your recipe in half and that's not a problem. Now just to give you uh, uh, an idea, I'm using a star for it. I don't know... Uh, if you have an Instapot or one of those older models, I have no idea uh, how to use one, but I can tell you what I did. Um, because my uh, pressure cooker only steams up to 60 minutes, I put it in twice. So this way it had a chance to, to cook all the way through. Uh, I had opened it up after 60 minutes. I... I tried 60 minutes after 60 minutes I noticed that half of my uh, seitan was cooked and the other half was still very um, doughy like so I did put it in for another hour I flipped it over and it worked just great or just don't touch it at all all you have to do is set your time again and put it in for at least two hours so here is my insert I'm gonna put this in and I'm just going to let this go for two hours and then we're going to let it cool off before we shred it. Okay, so there we go. I have her on for one hour and then we're going to cook her one more hour. And I'll show you what it looks like once she's all cooled off. So here is my beautiful chicken uh, meat that I cooked in the pressure cooker. It's still 
sealed, but I will let this cool off before I do anything. I should be able to handle this. If you can't handle this, you're going to make a mess and you're going to get, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You'll end up having chunks of meat rather than uh, shredded meat. So you do want to wait for your meat to cool off. And we're going to crack this open and we're going to start shredding it. So I'll see you in a little bit. Trying to do this without burning myself, guys. I should have waited. Let's see if we can do it this way. And you want to just pull it against. There you go. Do you see it? So it depends the size you want, but basically it just comes apart nicely. So again. Eee. Eesh, eesh, eesh. There we go. Yeah, I should have waited a little longer. Maybe I'll do that. Just wait a little longer. So there you go guys, hope you like this recipe and we'll see each other in the next one. I'll show you another dish that I make with this meat. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawson Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.